Hello everybody, good to see you again and good to be here with you uh, so we can go over some, some of the Word of God that's given to us by the Holy Spirit speaking through these men who were uh, faithful to God, following Him, submitted and obedient to God and uh, following Him faithfully with everything they knew. And when they stumbled, they uh, called, they turned back to Him and uh, got back up. So James comes after the, there's 14 books written by Paul after the book of Acts, if you count Hebrews as Paul's. Then after that, between Paul and Peter, first and second Peter would be James. And James is the brother of Jesus. Anyway, these guys, these apostles are filled with the Holy Spirit. You see a difference in them after being filled with the Holy Spirit. And after, you know, of course, turning to Jesus as Lord. But then after that filling of the Spirit, the latter days that uh, Peter talked about that Joel was speaking of when they got the Holy Spirit. Well, James, he was a lot different before because when you look at him before, the brother of Jesus, his brothers didn't even believe that he was this Christ. But they did afterwards. And Jesus, when at uh, one time they said, your uh, family is outside. And he looks at his disciples and says, my family are those who hear and I think he said, hear and do the word of God. And so there's a, a kind of a separation. It's not by physical blood, but there's a spiritual thing that's going on. So James, he greatly did change afterwards. And we also know of James, and I'm, I'm going to go over James, what we have, because we see him also outside of the Bible in Jewish history, the Josephus the Jewish historian, and this is something that he wrote. Okay, make sure my sound's good. Okay, now if we were to look at Josephus, the Book of Antiqu Antiquities. Now he's he's got the Jewish wars that Josephus had done the history on, and that would be one of the things you're dealing with with that would be the fall of Jerusalem at 70 A.D., which is very interesting, the things he wrote. And uh, I did a uh, video on that you can go back and look for but what he wrote of James in the book of antiquities book 20 chapter 9 is this but this younger Ananus who as we have told you already took the high priesthood so they got somebody that just took the, the high priesthood in Jerusalem there he was a bold man in his temper and very insolent he was also of the sect of the Sadducees now you remember what Paul was See, if you remember, Paul starts with a P, then Pharisees starts with a P. So Paul was a Pharisee, but these are the Sadducees, who are very rigid in judging offenders above all the rest of the Jews, as we already observed. When, therefore, Ananus was of this disposition, he thought he had now a proper opportunity to exercise his authority. Festus, now dead, and Albinus was but upon the road, so he assembled the Sanhedrin of judges and brought before them the brother of Jesus, who was called Christ, whose name was James, and some others. And when he had formed an accusation against them as breakers of the law, he delivered them to be stoned. A lot of people don't know Jesus is mentioned outside of the Bible, and so is James and some other things in history. James, a bondservant of God. Okay, remember we looked at bondservant, that's a slave. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here James is, is calling Jesus a he, Lord and Christ. Christ is Greek for the Messiah. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, so he's talking to his brethren, now, brethren are those who are in Christ, who have turned to Jesus as the Christ. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, isn't that so much like we just saw in Philippians with Paul, where he is talking about being in that joy for the furtherance of the gospel? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, 
but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his waves. So we, ways. So we don't want to be unstable without a rudder. See, we have a, a new heart and a, a heart that's towards God. So we take our will and turn it that way like a rudder. Count it all joy, falling into various trials, testing of our faith is equaling coming up to patience. If we want wisdom, ask of God. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom also, you see, in the uh, Psalms. Okay, ask in faith, not doubting. And we don't want to be double-minded. If God is God, follow him. If Baal is God, then follow him. Look, you got to make up your mind. Now, God put be before us life and death. We're called to choose life. I mean, God even gives us the answer. And Jesus gave us the answer. He said, I am life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father. So you don't need to go to a man, a religious organization. You need to go to Jesus. And then, then we start getting together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of a field will pass away, for no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes, so the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. So, yeah, that's that's the kind of the trouble, because Jesus, didn't he say it's easier for a rich a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man uh, to enter the gates of heaven? Well, see, because we get off on our own pursuits and different things, and you notice a lot of people, they don't want to turn to even seeing what the will of God is, because... They're really busy about their will. Or they'll take a, you know, maybe they got itching ears to hear a certain preacher that's going to entice them into following their own will instead of God's will. That can happen too. Be humble. There are worldly pursuits. And, you know, if you're low, God, God will lift you up also. Okay, now let's look at the next section, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Now, this is a good one, enduring, because we're called to endure a lot of different things. And I wrote some, uh, some of the things, of course, we're in, we endure temptation, we do endure hardships, we endure sound doctrine, we endure, well, it says endure all things, endure chastening of the Lord. And it says, if we endure... We shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So th that's that's uh, interesting. And where do we see that? Second Timothy, chapter two, verse twelve. So we see this enduring and denying. Endure or deny? Are we going to endure things? Are we going to deny God and not follow him? Now, another thing about endure, endure, I was looking the word up, endure. If you go to uh, your Bible, if you have a Strong's Concordance, you can look up every word in the Bible, in, in that New Testament, and you can look up, uh, if you, well, if you have a, a Bible on your phone, like I have Blue Letter Bible, I can hit a paragraph, go to the concordance, and look up every word in that paragraph in the Greek or the Hebrew whichever it happens to be. It means to stay under or behind, remain, undergo, bear trials, have fortitude, and persevere. And forti fortitude comes from the word fortify, which, which means to strengthen. So, yeah, but to stay under and stay behind. Well, who are we supposed to stay under? We're supposed to stay under God, under the Master. A horse is under the master, is under the rider, to be submitted and obedient to the, 
the master who's got the reins. And so we also are to be under and obedient to the master. And, you know, we follow him as who we follow. We don't go ahead of God, but we follow him. And that's what we're called to do. So we're supposed to endure temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So see, there's promises to those who love him. And a lot of times we might get this thing uh, kind of mixed up. You know, we kind of focus on him loving us, which he does. And he's given and shown all in doing that. But do we love him? Because if we love him, we'll obey him, is what it says. Okay, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted or tried and tested when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Okay, so that word entrapped uh, or enticed is also entrapped. So we don't want to be drawn away and entrapped. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So let's just review. So you'll see what I did was just I write little notes on the side um, that help me. So being drawn away, okay, what is it? Our own desires and that can get us trapped. And it conceives, it births, and then what comes out of that is sin. And of course, sin leads to death. And that's what not what we want at all. We have life in Christ. It says, don't be deceived. And that, that uh, can be going astray. My beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of shadow or of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. His will brought us forth by the word of truth. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus is the creator. You know, some of these uh, false doctrines will tell you he's something else, that he's a created being, but he's not. He is the creator also. God knew, you know, that, that man would sin, they would fall, he would need to come himself to be an offering for us, and uh, that he would be risen up, and that, that we would also still be here, to follow his will and that we would need the help of the Holy Spirit. So that's why we see God, he is one, but he is also in three, so he can follow his plan in uh, saving us. But he's still one. Now, another thing what, that we see here is that, that we might be a kind of first fruits. Now, what's interesting about James saying that, a uh, first fruit, and this is like the this... When you do a harvest, there's a first offering that was given to God. And you see this in the book of Revelations in chapter 7 and chapter 14, talking about the 144,000. And in chapter 14, you will see that the 144,000, and then they're called a first fruits, and then after that, a great multitude. So it seems like these that first turned to God, and you see James, boy, I mean, here he is, the first harvest, here he is, boom, stoned to death, crushed, and the blood coming out like grapes, you know, a heart of first fruit, and then here, after that, of course, to be uh, dead in the body is to be present with the Lord for those who believe, so God has this uh, first fruit offerings that are coming forth, but then it's to go to the whole rest of the world. So that is very interesting. Verse 19, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift or ready to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 
for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, okay, let's go back over that. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. On the wrath, okay, what I wrote was that desire reaching forth. When you look up the word wrath, desire reaching forth, uh, anger, and natural disposition. So those things, that wrath of man, it does not uh, produce or work fully or accomplish the righteousness of God. It does not do that. See, that it's the, the natural things cannot do the things of God. That's why we needed a new nature, and that's why we, we need the Holy Spirit. We need a heart that's turned towards wanting to do God's will, not to be a, a harlot that wants to do just what we want to do, but turn towards the husband as faithful. Okay, verse 21, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Isn't that, now look at that, it's by the implanted word that is able to save our souls. So here we hear the word, and then we're getting that word implanted. And so Christ in us, and we in him. And uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty one, and that's uh, where Paul's speaking, and he says, It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached or proclaimed, to save those who believe. So isn't that something? By the foolishness of this message proclaimed, that to save the soul. So it, it does seem foolish that you can just speak the truth. But here you are, we're speaking and proclaiming the truth. We can be somewhere, whether people do it, um, well, anywhere. I mean, we see in the Bible uh, that it can be done uh, just on a trail where everybody's going to. And then, uh, was it Philip that was uh, preaching to that one eunuch? And uh, he he was reading scripture and Philip explained what the scripture was speaking about and he turned to the Lord and was baptized right there. Or Peter, when he's speaking and then 3,000 of them come to the Lord. But yeah, it does seem foolish to the world, but the Holy Spirit is going out and he's convicting the hearts. And, you know, sometimes that is just going to be a seed that maybe will come about later on when they're ready. So I don't know when they're ready, but the Holy Spirit does. I'll just uh, do what he says as much as I know to do. But be doers of the word. So we want to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. So we're looking in this perfect law of freedom, and we're continuing in it. We're not backsliding and turning away from it. If you found yourself backslidden, hey, turn to God. He, he loves you. He wants you up there more than he does, and he's going to help you. And he has a supernatural help, not a natural help. It's more than that. Okay, and is not a forgetful hearer. Oh, yeah, because we can hear it and forget, can't we? That's why it's good to be reminded. That's why I like to get into the Word as often as I can, because, yeah, darn, I, I can be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So we're called to do, and God will bless us in it. Wow, that's, that is uh, good to hear. If anyone among you thinks he is religious, okay, so here we're going to talk about what is true religion and what isn't, and he doesn't bridle his tongue, so you want to hold that tongue in check. You know, it has a kind of like a horse here. Uh, you can curb that direction, you know, a curb bit, or hold that in check. Okay, so if you don't do that, but deceive his own heart deceive or cheat you're cheating your own heart when you do that this one's religion is useless so we have to hold ourself 
our tongue. The tongue, it's so important. Okay. This one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God. Okay, here's a different religion that's pure. So, before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. So, here we need to, for this pure religion, check ourselves in our tongue especially and do some things like helping people out. It has here, helping the, the real widow, the, the real orphans that don't have any fathers in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Now that's a great one to keep oneself unspotted in the world because we have been set apart by Christ and his payment of sins for us. And that, that's something that's very precious, more better than uh, gold and silver. But uh, that's such a good reminder to be unspotted from the world because sometimes we get to loving the things in the world way, way too much. Okay, now... We're in chapter 2. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. So here we can't be partial. God, do, he, God doesn't play favorites. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings, a fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man with filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, Will you sit here in this good place and say to the poor man, well, you go stand over there or sit sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? So you don't want to be a judge with an evil thought. That is really showing partiality. But see, we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord, and God sees what we really are inside. It's not what we are on the outside. Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? I like how many times it talks about the kingdom, this uh, invisible kingdom that's going on that really uh, people have a hard time seeing this kingdom of God because it's spiritual. It goes right over their heads. They're so focused on the earthly things that that's going over their head which he promised to those who love him. So again, here we see those who love him, we get a crown of life, and heirs of the kingdom. So isn't it great that, that we actually have an inheritance? But you have dishonored. So dishonor is, uh, honor is showing worth. Dis is cutting, cutting, um, separating from. So, you're separating this poor man from, from God saying that he has worth. And because you're only looking at the outside worth of another man. Okay, do not the rich oppress you and drag you into courts? So here we're talking about the rich oppressing others. Do they not blaspheme the noble, noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. Okay, so here James is talking about scripture. Now, what scripture is he talking about when he's talking about the royal law? Well, in most Bibles, you look at your notes, and it shows you right here in this Bible, Leviticus 19.18. Now, Leviticus is the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, one of the first five books of the Bible. So that, that's what they're calling the scripture to look at. And I say that because a lot of people say, well, we don't look at the Old Testament. Well, these people here were looking at the Old Testament, but they knew uh, what it was really speaking of because uh, they know Jesus and he showed them more things. Okay. It says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That comes from the Old Testament. And Jesus, of course, talked about that. And Jesus uh, also put it to where, to love others as I have loved you. Okay, so you do well if you do that. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whatever shall keep, whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he's guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, don't murder. Now, if... 
you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So we have a freedom in Christ in the new covenant that he has given us. And this is different than the law that the Jews were doing because we were no, no longer held by the laws that the Jews were doing by some of their religious acts and deeds any longer because Christ fulfilled the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So speak and do for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy and mercy triumphs over judgment. Isn't that great? Mercy triumphs over judgment. 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Well, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warned and filled, but ye don't give them things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself does not have works. If it does not have works, is dead. So faith by itself, if it doesn't have the works following it, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. So it's a, you know, hey, you get a bonus here, extra thing, and it uh, shows more. You believe that there is one God. Well, you do well. Even the demons believe and they tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, well, here he's calling them foolish, that faith without works is dead. At least the ones who are uh, trying to espouse a faith, but they're not doing works. He's calling them fools. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son at, on the altar? So here he believed God and then he did. Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? Ah, so here's how we make our faith perfect by doing works. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Now, that's great that um, that uh, God can call us a friend when we're following him and, and acting accordingly. You see that uh, the a man is justified by works and not by faith only. And likewise, Rahab the harlot, also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way for the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so I like this here he gives an example of how Abraham he was not a Jew he was just one man out of the world so Abraham a man out of the world and Rahab a harlot isn't that great that we have two examples that turned to God, believed God, and followed Him, where they were submitted to Him, faithful and obedient to God. All right, praise God, and uh, I pray that uh, that we also are submitted and obedient to God and follow Him faithful to the end. God bless you.